Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to The Greg McAfee Show, where we will discuss steps to a successful entrepreneurship, how to take your business to new heights, and ultimately follow your dreams. Today, we're going to be discussing five strategies to business success. Now, I did a FaceTime Live on this uh, a week or so ago, and uh, it was very successful. I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of compliments that it helped them, and uh, that's what this is all about. If it helps you to start, grow, or continue to grow your business, that's what this podcast is all about. I just hope things I say help you as much as they have helped me because I've learned from some of the best. Okay, we're going to start off with the ability to conserve cash. Very important today. Um, no matter how good your business is going, we have to conserve cash because cash is still king. Okay, cash is king. And Interest rates are going up right now. Uh, we are in a uh, inflation like we've never seen it before, and we're headed to a recession. Who knows what that looks like? Uh, if I knew, I would be living um, next to Bill Gates somewhere. Um, but I do know cash is king. And um, what are some things we can do uh, for this? Uh, conserving cash is to uh, reinvest our profits. Uh, and that's something that I have done from day one is reinvest profits. So um, when we had little profits or we have big profits, we're constantly reinvesting them back into the business. That means putting them back into the account um, and then buying equipment, buying trucks, hiring, uh, training, big, big amount of training goes on here. A large amount of training goes on here at McAfee. Um, so we're, we're taking the profits and we're putting them back into the company, reinvesting them, um, you know, hoping to continue to grow bigger and bigger and, and all that kind of stuff that basically a healthy business does. So we're all go we, we also are going to um, find ways to save and cut costs. And, uh, you know, you can do that by multiple ways in your business. I don't know, you know, most of the um, listeners and viewers of, of my show, of, of the Greg McAfee show, uh, are basically in uh, home trade businesses, whether they be HVAC, electrical, plumbing, landscaping, lawn care, roofing, remodeling, um, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, we, we can find ways to save and cut costs. And if you need ideas for that, you know, give me a call. But you know there are ways in your business what needs to be cut, what needs to be scaled, what needs to be shaved, what needs to be reduced. You, you've got all that. You know that. And uh, with prices um, increasing, I, I posted something the other day that, um, you know, with gas going up so high and everything, everything skyrocketing right now in this inflation, terrible mode we're in, um, if you haven't raised your prices substantially, you're not going to be around long. Uh, so you really need to take a look at your prices or have someone who knows a little bit more about that. Take a look at your prices because if you haven't raised your prices at least three or four times um, in the last six months, you're just not going to be around long. And if you are, you're going to be, you know, hanging on um, barely, barely hanging on, I should say, because you've, you've got to increase your prices because everything around you and everything you purchase has increased. And I like to say, you know, at McAfee, we run a lean, mean operation, okay? I think I got those terms from being in the Marine Corps. We were pretty lean and mean. We had lean and mean units, 
and um, uh, platoons and all that kind of stuff. But um, at McAfee, we we run a lean operation. Uh, we do more with less than most companies do uh, with more. Okay, so we do more with less people um, than most companies do that have. 10 more employees than us. Um, when we take the average of per person, when we take our gross profit, our gross sales, rather, not our gross profit, our gross revenue, our gross sales, and we divide by how many people we have on our team, that number is extremely high. That's running a lean operation. And when I coach companies that have more people than us or less people than us, and that number's way, way low, I know I can help them. I can help them right away. I can help them get that number up. We're gonna look at a handful of things to get that number up, but that's just a good metric for you to take and see where you're at on that number. So you've gotta reduce expenses, you've gotta think smart, you've gotta run a smart operation to run a lean, mean operation. Um, you know, and you don't need it all right now. You know, if you've been in business one, two, five, 10, 15, 20, and you think that you have earned your way to this big boat or this big car or this big house, whatever it is, or this big vacation house or all that stuff, you haven't. And you're probably moving too fast because all that stuff will come. It will come. You just take care of people, do your job well, hire great people, train them well, build a great team, leadership team, and put systems in place. You could have all that later. I mentioned something the other day about I'm a Rocky fan, and uh, there was a fighter named Tommy Gunn, and Tommy Gunn wanted Rocky uh, to train him, and at first, you know, Sylvester Stallone played Rocky and Rocky was hesitant about it, uh, but he took him on and all of a sudden he got really, he was a very good athlete. Rocky trained him. He got very good, was moving up the ranks, was going to be a champion of the world, but he wanted it too soon. And he got involved in this other trainer um, that was all about the money and all about the show. And uh, he pulled up at Rocky's little house at the time because Rocky lost it all. And, you know, he's driving this Cadillac convertible and, you know, Rocky looked at him and said, you know, you can have 10 of these things. Just keep doing what you're doing. Let me train you. We will move up the ranks and you can own 10 of these cars. But no, he wanted it now. And Tommy Gunn burnt rubber going off and, you know, Rocky had an episode and, um, and he ended up, Tommy Gunn lost it all. He lost it all um, because he got way too cocky and he wanted to be the Rocky, but Rocky had a lot more things going for him like respect and, and everything else. Uh, but that's just, that's, I see a lot of business people wanting it all right now and, and you don't need it all right now. You don't deserve it all right now. You've got to work hard for it. You've got to work long for it. And then one day you can have it if you still want it. <laughs> So uh, I think Harvey Firestone said in one of his books, I think there's something in a man or a woman, but at, at the time he wrote the book, it was probably back in the you know, 1920s or 30s. He said, there's something that gets in a man when he starts making money that he wants to build or buy a house that's much, much bigger than what they need. You know, and there is, I don't, you know, there is something that gets in us. Then we want that car. We want that plane. We want that helicopter. We want that boat. You know, um, it depends on how many zeros you have, uh, but we want, always want more, more, more. Um, and there's nothing wrong with stuff. Um, and, and stuff comes sometimes with having money. Uh, but boy, if you get it too quick, it'll take you under fast. Okay. Um, and also seek constant improvement. Uh, the Japanese have a word for that. It's called Kaizen. Um, and it's constantly tweaking things. It's constantly improving things. It's constantly making things better. Um, I go around from time to time on my team and I go to different departments and I ask, what can I do to help your job be easier? What can I do to help your job be better? You know, 
What can I do to help you be more productive? Constantly improving. It's You'll be surprised what comes up from the ranks. They have some great ideas. Some of the best ideas in business came from the ranks. Didn't come from the board table. I'll tell you that. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I thought about Kaizen. I thought, you know, make your response time better. If you're in an industry where you service people, you've got to constantly improve your response time. You get that response time done and down rather, and you're kicking butt and you're making things happen and you're floating to the top in your area. And, and, uh, that's when you're going to see results. So, uh, you know, and, and by cutting costs and reinvesting profits and all that, I remember at one time, and this has been probably 15 years ago, but I remember at one time where, when we refrigerant R22 was skyrocketing in price. And, um, I bought, I was able to buy per jug. The first round I bought at $56 a jug and I was able to buy five skids. And then I got to thinking, we're going to go through that pretty fast. So I bought like another 10 skids. It had went up to like $62 a jug, but I bought another 10 skids. And I'm telling you something, it went up and up till it's somewhere over three to $400 a pound today. And, um, you know, it's, it's almost history, but you know, we, we're still hanging on to, you know, maybe 20 of those jugs still today because, you know, we've sold so many new systems and, and, uh, everybody's converted to the new refrigerants and all that stuff. But I was able to do that. I was able to stroke a check at the time for all that refrigerant and put it in stock like a bank account. And over a period of time, I, I would like to say that we made a very, very large profit off that investment that I was able to do because I was prepared and I, and I had, um, a good response time, not only to service my customers, but a good response time to buy, know when to buy, know when to sell. In our world, sometimes it's buying things that are skyrocketing in price and going up and you can buy at a much lower price. We do that for almost everything. Copper, aluminum, units, whatever it is, you know, so just think about that. My method of teaching is called the lap method. And I don't talk about that enough, but lap stands for learn, act, produce, and prosper. And this is how we run McAfee. And this is how I teach others to run their business. Um, but it's getting in the habit of learning, constantly learning, constantly learning more. You know, you never know enough. You really don't. You're, our minds can hold so much and we're only using what one third of most of us are using one third of our brain. There is so much more we can learn. Um, so learn and then act. That's the path to success. That's the action mode, act. And then produce. You know, we can produce great service. We can produce great people. You know, we can produce a need for someone to call us. And then prosper. And again, that's the byproduct of learn, act, produce is prosper. We prosper as a company. We prosper as a business. We prosper as an entrepreneur. For goodness sake, it's a good thing to prosper. All right, number two, brand like there's no other brand. You know, we were a loyal Bryant dealer for 13 years. Our first 13 years in business, we were a loyal Bryant dealer and, cu and customers would call McAfee thinking we were Bryant. That's how well we advertised and marketed and branded Bryant. And that's when it hit me. If I can brand Bryant so well, why can't I brand my own name, my own company, my own private label and learn, act, produce and prosper, right? So that's what we did and it worked out extremely well. Yeah, it was a little slow at the beginning and it was, uh, we, you know, we had a few bumps in the road at the beginning, uh, but today we're a hundred percent McAfee in all equipment and all accessories in all that we do. And it's paid off extremely well. So 
we've become a name brand in our market. Someone on a podcast the other day said uh, they were talking about me and they were talking about McAfee being a trailblazer. And the, the, one, the one guy on the podcast said um, he was from Dayton, Ohio. And in Dayton, Ohio, McAfee is a national brand name. And I, I've mentioned this before, but we've gone up against other big uh, national brand names. And in Dayton, Ohio, we float to the top over those names. So I've, I've done exactly what I set out to do, and, and that is make the McAfee name well known. And that takes consistency, consistency, consistency. I, I can't say that enough. You've got to be consistent in all that you do. Quit jumping around. You know, uh, I've used this illustration in the past, but I, I used to coach someone. And when I first started coaching them, they had three different color trucks and none of the logos were consistent and all that kind of stuff. That matters, folks. Everything matters. Be consistent. Everything looks the same. And also, not only should it look the same, it should be the same. From an internal standpoint, Inside our service trucks, they're extremely consistently the same. So if any service tech jumps in, they can um, work out of that truck because they're, it's just like their truck. So be consistent. And we, um, we found um, that our kind of customers fit our culture because we brand and market and advertise for those kind of customers. Now, will, will we service everyone? Well, not necessarily. I'll be honest with you, not necessarily. If they don't have, if they don't have the kind of equipment we, we service, then no. Or, you know, if, if, uh, if we're giving an estimate and they're getting 10 estimates, then we'd rather not participate. Or if they want the low ball price, uh, we're not going to be for them. So no, we don't service everyone, but we do, we do have our kind of customer and we know who they are. We know what they look like. We know where they live. We know what they make, how much they make and all that good stuff. And that's who we market for. And that's who we hit because we know them well and we know how to sell to them and we know how to service them and we know what they like. And that's important. It's kind of like knowing what you want to be when you grow up. All right, number three, take care of people like no one else. Take care of people like no one else. I say this often, just take care of people and you will grow and you will prosper. And uh, it, that's your employees, hire qualified people, continue to train them, right, provide an atmosphere where they can succeed, and then get out of the way and let them go at it. And then you've got customers. Again, you've got customers. Take care of people. Take care of customers. Do what others aren't willing to do. Set a pace. Give them what they want. The customer's always right, no matter how wrong they are. And then you've got your vendors. We leave vendors out sometimes, and that's not fair. Our vendors supply us with everything we need. And I'm very loyal to my vendors. I only have a handful of vendors, and I take care of my vendors, and I appreciate my vendors. Now I do negotiate with my vendors. Uh, it's getting harder and harder and harder to do in today's world, in today's market, um, you know, when I was, when I was younger, you could go to a car lot and negotiate a car lot. Now everything's a set price that takes all the fun out of it. I'll be honest with you for a lot of us who like to buy and deal and all that kind of good stuff and negotiate that takes all the fun out of it. And everything's becoming like that. Um, but I'll tell you when you're buying a lot of stuff, you've earned that privilege to negotiate your price. Why should I pay more? For my equipment, when I'm buying a hundred times more, maybe than the Joe heating down the street, it's only fair. Okay, number four: successful people have strong mentors, coaches, advisors, 
boards of advisors, et cetera. So I always say, drop the ego. You need to listen to people. We all need to listen to people. And the wealthiest people in the world are better than most at listening to people. That's why they're the wealthiest people in the world. Elon Musk has coaches and advisors and everything else around him because he's a sponge and that's why he is the richest man in the world right now. Okay, so drop your ego. Um, you know, if you're the smartest person at the table, you're at the wrong table. That's a fact. You need to surround yourself with smarter people and that's how you become smarter. So you got to have a coach. I've had a coach from day one for the first year in business. I hired a coach. His, his company was called Bear Management and he taught me a lot. And then I got another coach and another coach and another coach. And I'm, I just, I squeeze them. They're a sponge and I squeeze everything out of them. And then I get another bigger sponge and I keep going on and on and on. And that's how I learn. And I also have mentors. I have mentors in our industry. You know, I have mentors outside of our industry. I have smart, much smarter people than me that I ask questions. And uh, so find successful people, more successful than you, and hang with them, hire them, whatever it takes. And lastly, number five, very, very, very important, number five. Any ideas? Okay. Number five, close sales. Nothing else matters, folks. You can be the best business person in the world. You can read all the books. You can hire all the coaches. You can do everything you want to do. But if you don't close sales or someone in your company, if they don't close sales, you're out of business really fast. So this is number five but it's critical. So number five, close sales. Nothing else matters, folks. Nothing else matters. If you're not concerned and not concerned about raising your bar for closing sales, why are you in business? I always suggest to read books like, uh, books from rather Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Mike Kaplan, Grant Cardone. Those kind of people know what it, what closing sales was all about. There's all kinds of procedures for sales. There's all kinds of sales systems. There's all kinds of stuff like that. But the bottom line is in my world, we're not walking out of that house until press hard, three copies, old school invoices. <laughs> no, we don't use those. But I still say press hard, three copies because it's uh, that's the close. You're done. Actually, you're not done. Grant Cardone preaches and teaches on that second money. And that second money is after you close, then you add more on to it because he says it's a lot easier, and I have found out he is right. It's a lot easier to add on after you've made that sale to take it from a $15,000 sale to a $20,000 sale because they're only adding a, a very little bit to their monthly bill if they're financing it. Okay. Listen to this. Closing, this is Greg McAfee. This is my opinion. I've coached a lot of a, a lot of different players, a lot of different companies. This is my opinion. This is what I've learned. But I think if you're closing at anything less than 75%, you're considered needing improvement. And I talk to guys all the time and they're happy with 55 and 60%. That means 4 to 4.5 to 5 out of 10, you're leaving on the table. And that's a lot of money in my world. That's a lot of money. 
I'm not going to tell you what we average, but it's much higher than that. Because every time I do, I get texts and, and emails and phone calls that, how are you doing this? this you're, not ad, you're not figuring it right and all that stuff. We only know one way to figure it. If we run 100 calls and we close 90, we just close 90%. That's the only way I know how to figure it. Okay? But if you're closing less than 75%, folks, and I'm extremely passionate about this if you can't tell because you're leaving money on the table and you need improvement. According to Harvard Business Review Study, they found out that out of 230 buyers, they rated salespeople 12% excellent. 23% were good. Now, these are rating salespeople. 12% were excellent, 23% were good, and 38% were average, 27 were poor. They sucked, okay? The bad part is the 65% don't know they suck. You know why? Because they don't listen to anyone, and they don't read good books, and they don't, and they don't watch good podcasts, and they don't get motivated. And they just go out and do the same old, same old. And, and the problem is the owners of the company are satisfied with that. They're making enough to do what? Be comfortable. And that's about it. In my world, in the HVAC world, my job's to keep my customer comfortable. My job's to keep my salespeople uncomfortable. We're pushing it. We're making it happen. It's not for everyone. If you want to make a lot of money, it is. Okay, so why, why did 65% of those salespeople suck? Here's just a few reasons, and we're going to wrap up with this. They were either too self-centered, or they had the wrong closing strategy, or their only concern was money, and it's very noticeable sitting at a table in a homeowner. If you're only about money and wanting to sell and not find out what the customer truly needs or wants, or they had no solution for the customer because they weren't listening to the customer, or they just had something about them that couldn't be trusted, big turnoff right away. Or most importantly here from me, this is what I teach a lot of, they lacked confidence. See, we go into every sale, it's already sold. You might as well go ahead and put it on the schedule, find a place for it before you walk through that door because it's already sold. And that's how I think, and that's how my team thinks, and that's why we are at such a high-rated closing percentage. Confidence. So think about that. Okay, so before we wrap up, if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe below. You can also support this podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or on your preferred listening platform. Keep listening because I'm here to help your business grow. I'm here to help you sleep better at night. And I'm, I am here to help you make more money. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram or Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. And be sure to tune in next week. And I'm excited about this one. Uh, be sure to tune in next week when we discuss five systems your small business needs to have. Thanks for listening. And as always, carry on and have a great day.